In this video we're going to install the Windows Distribution Services. This allows us to install Windows clients across the network from our server. So we're going to add the role. Yes, next. And it's going to be this server. This is the only server in our domain. So Windows Deployment Services, tick. Uh, add the tool, yes, we would like to add the tool. And next. There's some information there about uh, the tool. Now I'm not sure if it needs a restart, but if it does, let's restart automatically. Yes. And go. As I was saying, the benefit of using WDS is that we can deploy our install images across the network to our new machines rather than having to take a physical DVD to each machine. Particularly in this day when more and more machines are being shipped without DVDs installed. So that's installed, so we close that. We just check this uh, flag here. Installation succeeded. Jolly good. So on the left hand side you'll notice a new uh, uh, dashboard icon uh, for WDS. So we're going to look at the tools we're going to look at the firewall just to have a look at uh, what's happened with that. If things are going across the network in and out of this machine then the firewall needs to be told about the new service and the installation procedure does that for us. And set up four rules so they're all labeled Windows deployment services and you can see that they're enabled and the action is to allow the communication so our next task is to configure the uh, deployment services we've installed it so out to tools down to Windows deployment services tool and yep, shuffle that up. If we click on servers, you'll notice that our server has a little yellow icon saying it's not configured. So I'll right click the server as we're told and click configure. This takes us through a little wizard, tells us a bit about what we need. So we need active domain, active directory domain, DSCP server, DNS server and the server has an NTFS system partition to store images. Yep, we've got all that. Now we're going to be integrated with Active Directory. So that's this machine is an AD controller. So yep. Um, we probably should put this on another disk, but for the purpose of this exercise, we'll leave it on the C drive. So yes. Um, these settings, leave them as default because we're using a Microsoft based server setup we leave them as that next um, we're going to respond to all client computers known and unknown so that's the third radio button down Okay, so copy the files and the service didn't start. That's because we're still not fully configured yet. So you can see now we've got the stop there. So let's look in the properties. So some of these things were filled in by the wizard. So the pixie response domain server. Now while we're here this is set up to put the username as the computer's name. I don't want that. I want it to begin with 312 being our domain. PC being the desktop PC. And I want it to have three digit serial number afterwards. So starting from 001 all the way through to 999. Not that I expect we'll have a thousand PCs on our network considering our DHCP environment is set up for only about a hundred but that's 
that's the way to change the name. Uh, apply that and no errors. We'll deal with the um, boot capability. So yes, the Pixie Boot uses F12. Uh, we haven't got an unattend uh, install files, but you can look on Microsoft TechNet to find out about those and makes this process even easier by setting up some configuration files and allowing you to just start the machine and then walk away and the whole install is done manually. So now that we've done that little bit of extra configuration we should be able to start this. So we go over here, right click, all tasks and start and we're away. Jolly good. So now we're going to get the boot and install images for our Windows 7 clients. So I've got a CD in the drive. So just have a look there. So you see it's a Windows disk. Yep. So onto the server doesn't matter if we do boot images and then install images or other way around but uh, we'll do boot first so browse to the CD and we're looking for a Windows image file or WIM and these are in the sources so boot.wim they make it really easy for us to find them yeah, there's boot.wim and install.wim and the boot image is boot.wim so it says Microsoft Windows Setup for x86, yep. So that gets copied over off the CD, or DVD, sorry. And finish. Up to Install Images, and we'll add ourselves the install image. And doesn't matter what you call the group as long as it's got a name. So it defaults to the same location, click the install WIM file OK, next it says, ah, we've got Windows 7 Enterprise, jolly good so it checks the integrity and then copies the file over, this is a larger file because it's the uh, installation So once that's copied across, we're basically ready for us to go to another PC and uh, Pixie Boot, uh, pre-boot execution environment, um, and Pixie Boot that machine so that we can get the installer across the network and set up the machine. And that will be the topic of the next video in this series. See you then.